<sighs> Let's see. Ah, uh, Tom. What does Tom want? A new edition of On Demand is On Demand. <laughs> How ironic. Gonna check it out. We'll see. But first, a bowl of cheese curls and some ginger ale. On the man, on the man. On demand two, on demand. If you watch on demand, then welcome. This is on demand two for people that like to be demanding about what's on. This block of sketch-based program starts in the heart of Grace Hospital. Dr. McDreamy is on duty and he's got a patient to visit. This patient has been taken to an examination room. Let's check in on the conversation. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Hospital. I'm the attending physician, Dr. McDreamy, and uh... <laughs> You're kidding, right? Oh, I would never kid about the name of the hospital. Uh, what seems to be bothering you today? A problem. Mm-hmm. Appendix? Uh, no, but... Uh, excess muscles? Well, maybe, but that's not it. You see, I... Uh, something requiring me to say words like stat and clear, or at least an oversized band-aid with antiseptic? No! I'm gonna have to ask you to calm down, sir. I know. Uh, let's lighten things up here. Hey, I've got one for you. If the removal of the appendix is an appendectomy, and the removal of the tonsils is a tonsillectomy, What's the condition that requires the partial removal of excess follicle residue? Haircut. Heard that one before, huh? Uh, by the way, you can call me McDreamy. I'd rather walk barefoot in snow. I'd rather gargle with gravel. I'd rather crush pretzels with my eyelids. <gasps> you can do that? Do you have any pretzels on you? Uh, no. Good. Then yes, I can do that. Hmm. Is your problem lying? Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a problem. But that's not why I'm here. Well, wax on, daniel son. <laughs> uh, proceed. I have a full-blown case of grudge, and I don't know what to do with it. Ooh, yikes. Uh, not even two aspirin and a morning phone call can fix that. Is it terminal? Perhaps. But we might have caught it in time. Will it require a hospital stay? Well, not unless you enjoy spending lots of money for marginal room service. Is there something I can take for it? As a matter of fact, there is. Regular doses of Matthew 10.8 should do the trick. Matthew 10.8? Sure. Here are the instructions. Give as freely as you have received. Give as freely as you have received? Yep. Thanks for dropping by. Glad we could help. Have a nice day. Hey, wait a minute. What did I ever receive? Life hasn't exactly been the nicest to me. Ah, uh, that's where most people make mistakes. What are you talking about? Well, can you breathe? Well, yeah, but... And can you think? I'm not sure I understand. Can you use your muscles to crush aluminum cans on your kneecap? Odd, but... Well, then it's time to give back. I thought you could help. I just did. Uh, God gave you everything. He's offered you air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat, and the ability to work. He's offered forgiveness for all the stupid things you've done. Hey. We've all done stupid things. Uh, like the time I tilted the vending machine in an attempt to get an extra bag of cheese nibs. Ooh, you're a rebel. Not proud of it, my friend. But Jesus offers us a forever with him. And best of all, he offers love. So I'm supposed to give back to others? Because he gave to you. What about the way I feel? Feelings are useful, but kind of subjective. So what do I rely on? Facts. Pure, simple, unfiltered facts. Okay, so I should forgive. I got it. But I could put it last on my bucket list? That's about the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Hey. Oh, no offense. I'm just calling it like I see it. So what do I do? Forgive now. Have peace for a really long time. Hold up, hold up, wait. Explain the forgiveness thing again. Okay, uh, try this. When you don't forgive, it's like drinking poison and hoping the other person gets sick. Wow, profound in an existential kind of way. Nope, pure fact, my friend. Profound, yes. Existential, no. Well, gotta run. Do you have anything for extra long toenails? Um, clippers? What about pimples? Pimple pads, uh, but don't eat them. Yeah, you're all right, Doc. 
<sighs> and I'm feeling less threatened than I did a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, sorry, but, uh, I honestly thought you were going to hurt me. Maybe we can mutually forgive each other. Healing has begun, my friend. H hey, were you serious about that whole crushing pretzels with your eyelid thing? Uh, no. No, I wasn't. Whew, and the relief gets greater. Grace Hospital is brought to you by the pharmaceutical industry, where side effects are guaranteed. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. I was having a reaction to my medication. So anyway, yes, relief is one of the many possibilities. On this episode of On Demand, you're encouraged to join Paul, the stock boy, to find out that no duty is too small to ignore. And refusing to help is a strong possibility in our next story. Starting now. I'm not sure what's going on, Paul, but you haven't been doing your job. That's ridiculous, Grant. Of course I've been doing my job. You were hired as a stock boy, yet the store shelves are empty. So what's your point? You are a stock boy, and that's why you stock shelves. No, I don't. I clean up the stock room. That place was a mess. You should have seen the boxes. What? They keep piling up in there, so I make sure they make their way to the dumpster. Price check on cheese doodles? It says right here that the stock boy position makes sure that all items for sale in this store are restocked and that inadequate supplies are reported to the manager. That would be you. Yes, Paul, that would be me. Yet you're telling me that you threw away all of the boxes. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner back there now. So, when do I get my raise? You are supposed to stock shelves. Free Limburger samples in the deli. Bring your own breath mint, please. But Grant, and hear me out on this, that restricts my personal expression on how to deal with boxes. Some of the stuff in those boxes have MSGs and other preservatives. Could be bad for some people. Throw them away, I say. I like you, Paul. I really do. Cool. I kind of like you too, Grant. But if you ask me, I think you're wound just a little too tight. Unless you were willing to follow the manual, I'm afraid you're going to keep doing things I don't want you to do. Seems weird to go crazy on a self-starter, Grant. I see what needs to be done and I do it. But you're doing the wrong thing! Could someone take my place? I need a break. <laughs> I think you need to broaden your mind, sir. Your way seems pretty confusing if you ask me. Paul, the manual was written so that there would be order in our little grocery store. It was written with safety in mind. It was written so we could provide the best possible product at the best price. There is a reason why stock boys stock shelves. Wow, you've really given me a lot to think about. I'll get back to you on this. Uh, see you tomorrow. But... Ugh. Manager meltdown in the main office. Thanks for listening to On Demand. We'll be right back to check out the Vinyl Frontier. That's just 38 seconds from now. Give or take. When you want to relax with your friends and you want to improve your math skills, draw on the synergy that is bowling. Big Bob's Bowling and Books is ready to manage your physical and intellectual needs. Grab a basket of loaded cheese fries and visit our library. Shh. Or take a classic to the lanes and discuss philosophy while bowling strikes. Or something less ambitious. Remember, when it comes to Big Bob's B&B, &B, we don't encourage overnight stays, just intelligent bowlers. Look for us at the corner of Strike Street and Publisher Place, where diversification of business objectives has been confusing customers for longer than we've been in business. Our base is a vinyl frontier, rows and rows of stick-to-your-skin booths in the tradition of primitive 1950s ice cream parlors. Our mission is to boldly bowl where few have bowled before. We called our team the Split Strike Water Prize and had completed many successful games at bowling alleys throughout our universe. I'm Wayne P. Kurt, team captain. Arcade Supplemental 2.1. First team player Scott has captured the trophy in yet another futile attempt by opponents to vanquish the water prize. Some want to make a federal case out of it. <laughs> 
Even though Scott's ears look peculiar, he still has the best mind in bowling. It's only logical, Captain. Hitting the lead pin on either the left or the right will typically result in a much better showing. Should your bowling ball make a direct hit, the chances greatly increase for a phenomenon typically referred to as a split, generally a 710, although other variations are statistically possible. Fascinating. We had just landed in a bowling alley east of town when we encountered the static Klingon, their home turf. We knew immediately we were facing a formidable foe when Warfrat and his gang of bowling hoodlums entered the rows of shiny lanes. Well, I'm surprised you'd show your face around here, Kurt. Having never owned my own bowling ball before, I found myself immediately subjected to a nefarious case of Warfrat envy. Hey, uh, who are you talking to? <clears throat> a nice bowling ball. Uh, thanks. So, are we going to play? Or what? Oh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, now, don't overact on me here. Now, how do you do that? Sensors indicate an unusual buildup of envy in this quadrant. Can you be sure, Scott? Can any of us really be sure? Hey, could you check your device for the current location of overacting? I understand it's very close by. It suddenly occurred to me that the captain of our bowling league had unjustly been subjected to too many reruns of a popular television space exploration series, circa 1965. What are you saying, Scott? I believe I was clear on that point, Captain. You might have been, but I didn't understand a word you said. That would mean I need to be paying attention. Uh, by the way, who are you talking to? I believe it's your turn, Captain. You know, Warfrat, you don't stand a chance against the Water Prize. If you insist on continuing with this little game of yours, you will lose. Do you hear me? You will lose. Yeah, I think we heard you. Didn't you hear him? Yeah, he heard you too. All right. Here... I go. Now, excuse me, Kurt, but you've got my bowling ball. Oh, do I? So I do. Shiny. Yeah. How about you put that thing down and back away, slowly? What? Do you think I'm going to steal it or something? I was beginning to think that Kurt was up to no good. He had a reputation of putting up a fair fight, but... I was going to keep a close eye on my polished bowling. Uh, that, that's a bowling ball. Who are you in conversation with, Worf? I don't have any idea, but I figure if you could do it, so could I. Fascinating. If we're going to make the 9.30 at the Balm Frond Bowling Lawn, we've got to kick this game into warp speed, factor nine. And yeah, nice delivery. Thank you. Oh, would you look at the time. Scott, we've got to go. Ah, uh, not so fast, Captain Kurt. What is it now, Worf? Rat. I'll give you the opportunity to give me back my bowling ball, or I'll have to bring you up before the Bowling Federation. You wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare! Hey, you just try me. I couldn't help overhearing this somewhat inopportune fracas. Well, with those ears, it doesn't surprise me. They are rather pointy, but I'm still trying to figure out what he's saying. Rough translation. He heard we had trouble. Scott, why can't you talk like that? Don't look at me. I didn't write these lines. Would you just give him the ball? <sighs> oh, all right. It's just that I'm tired of using whatever chipped balls we find in these low-rent bowling alleys. Hey, now, have you ever thought about developing a budget? You might be able to buy your own. Aww, the cheese dripped from the fries. Clean me up, Scott. Arcade Supplemental 2.2. The infamous Wharf Rat turned out to have a pretty good head on his shoulders after Ah, well, was there any doubt? As it turns out, Envy is a worse enemy than Wharf Rat ever was. I'm ashamed that I fell victim to its nefarious power. Hey, is that an apology? I'll have to get back to you on that. Are you finished with that pencil? I need to calculate our final tally. Hey, what are you talking about? We didn't even get to play. In that case, can I buy you a cherry root beer with a twist of pickle juice? Oh, that's disgusting. It, it kind of reminds me of home. I don't know whether you guys heard or not, but I got a disease named after me. Fascinating. Kurt, the water prize. Yes, Captain. The bowling party apparently suffered a case of more fried envy. Is everyone all right? We're fine, Arula. Could you please check the database for any evidence of an antidote? By the way, I'm having a hard time hearing you. It might help, Captain, if you put the phone up to your ear. Phone? 
Hello? Sir, the computer shows that there was a warning issued long before today's bowling tournament. Ah, much better. Was there a problem with the transmission? No. However, the warning was issued nearly two millennia ago. Is that a long time? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Please, go on. This is the warning in its entirety, sir, from the Galatians Quadrant, Sector 526. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. How oh, good. I have missed it. What's the remedy, Arula? The same quadrant contains a preventative measure at 516. Yes, yes. Don't keep me waiting. Walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Suddenly, I knew what I had to do. I had to find Warfrat and ask for his forgiveness. Excuse me, Captain, but who are you talking to? <sighs> Never mind, Arula. Captain Kurt, out. Stand by for the show where the audience becomes the unexpected cast. Way back whimsy after the break, On Demand is on your device and in your ear. Today's programming is brought to you by John's Cleaning Products, applications that work hard under specific circumstances. At John's, we believe in truth in advertising. So if you think our products will clean your toughest mess, be sure to check our website to see if it is listed in our specific circumstances section. If it's not, don't say we didn't warn you. John's Cleaning Products. Cleaning some stuff really well. Others? Mm, yeah. Welcome to Wayback Whimsy, the show where we make you the star, and all you need to do is read your lines. Sounds easy, right? Okay, who wants to play? Let's see. You, and you, and you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited. Tell us about yourself. My name is Lisa. I'm 32, and I sell lots of used things on the internet. Welcome, Lisa. Here's your script. You will be playing the role of mother. Oh, and don't look at the script until we're ready. Got it. And you, sir? Yeah, my friends call me Louis. And your mom. She calls me Bird Dog. <laughs> Long story. No one's got time for that. Gotcha, bird dog. You'll be playing man in today's performance. Man? So, when the script says man, you read what follows. And you, miss? I'm 24. I live in a house. And my name is Michaela. Well, okay then. Here's your script. I've never done anything like this. Few people have, Michaela. So, if you're all ready, we'll have our orchestra start. And then you take off. And... action! Once upon a time, many, many years ago, there was a peasant girl named Miriam who lived in a small village. Hello, I'm Miriam. Her widowed mother had spent much time instructing the girl about the proper way to behave. Girls should never call boys on the phone. That is so next century, Mom. And Miriam learned right from wrong. Never cheat, lie, swear, or steal. One summer, Miriam's family became quite destitute. We are quite destitute. So I've heard. A region-wide drought caused the family's garden plot to wilt, then die. Would you just look at that corn, Mother? Kinda pathetic. Yea. Yeah. And verily, it hath perished. What? There would be no vegetables to put up, and savored through the cold months ahead. Food became very difficult to find. Mom? Where's the fridge? It hath not yet been invented. No wonder the food's so hard to find. So, probably no food delivery services either. At first, Miriam missed the taste of fresh corn and carrots. Then, she craved them. I am such a destitute waif. I shall soon fade from this earth without affirmation produce. That's aforementioned produce. Aforementioned. Aforementioned produce. Give me aforementioned produce. Aforementioned. Aformation for roof. <laughs> <laughs> Rough translation? She was hungry. Each day, Miriam had to venture further from home to find water for her family's needs. Haven't they ever heard of indoor plumbing? And every day, she desired what she had always taken for granted. Like a big pot of pinto beans. Mmm. Then the day came when Miriam discovered the well. 
Would you look at that? Water sprang forth, providing fresh, clean, cold water from deep under the ground. Water does a body good. She followed the stream as it flowed from the well and discovered a beautiful garden filled with sweet corn, potatoes, carrots, and cabbage, and a generous variety of vegetables more numerous than she had ever seen. Would you look at that? She could almost taste a fresh pot of homemade stew made from the abundance of these beautiful plants. The longer she looked at the garden, the more she desired the crops. I gotta have them! After entertaining the idea for far too long, Miriam hurriedly loaded her apron with as much vegetables as she could carry, and then she returned home, glancing furtively behind her, knowing she had stolen, knowing that what she had done was wrong. Where did you get those vegetables? A man's voice startled Miriam. I, uh... Oh, she stammered. I found them. In the middle of a drought? He challenged gently. Miriam rustled with defiance. I was hungry. Then anger. Doesn't he have anything better to do than look for vegetable robbers? Followed closely by a rather feeble attempt at justifying her act of thievery. I was just thinking of dear old mom. In the end, she could do no less than admit that she had indeed stolen the garden produce. I did. You did. I was really hoping for a different outcome. I know that you took my vegetables. Sure, because the loudmouth host over there told you. No. Well, yes, <laughs> I did hear him say that, but I saw you take them. The man stated. Your vegetables? I am blustered. Miriam blustered. Tis true. I've worked hard all summer growing these crops, and I had grand plans for them. The man added significantly. I kind of feel bad. Miriam bowed her head. Oh. The man was warmed by Miriam's act of contrition. Sir, I, I think we can take it from here. Oh, well, if you need me, I'm right here. Got it. Now, where were we? In the middle of an act of contrition, I believe. Oh, yeah, yours or, or mine? Would you believe me if I said yours? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, then it was me. I think you mean I. So it was you. No, it was you. You're confusing me. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let me say this. I am willing to extend to you either mercy or grace. Which is your desire? Aren't they the same thing? They are not, my lady. Well, then please explain mercy. Well, if I were to give you mercy, you would be completely forgiven for taking my vegetables. Then I want that. Perhaps. Yet, you will hear the matter of grace. If I extend grace, you would be invited to come and gather any vegetables from my garden that you like, at any time you like. It would be as if you were a member of my family, with all the rights of a daughter. Miriam marveled at the gifts offered to her. She knew that she did not deserve the man's kindness, and yet she longed in equal measure for both mercy and grace. <clears throat> Sorry. Old habits. Proceed. Sir, I don't deserve mercy or grace. I don't deserve the rights of a family member. Still, I can't return home without having My both. My dear child, you shall indeed have both. Mercy and grace. For in my mercy, I will not exact a punishment that you justly deserved. And in my grace, I will give to you what can never be earned. Will you accept my gift? Yes. Thanks for joining us on Wayback Whimsy, where mercy and grace are in review, and our actors are as on point as they can be without practice. The theme of grace continues in just a moment, and it happens with a phone, but doesn't result in the satisfaction one user is looking for. From the people who love to sell you stuff because you saw it on TV, comes something entirely new and marginally different. Gummy checkers. Gummy checkers. Gummy checkers. The new game where you devour your opponent's pieces. Good fun. Good taste. From the people who brought you the rock polishing umbrella and jerky on a stick. Gummy checkers. More fun than a pickle barrel filled with monkeys. And less salty. Gummy checkers. Refills are part of a multi-year replacement program. Replacements sold separately. Available wherever it's available. Order now. Operators are busy. Try something else. Call your mom. 
That's right. Call now and get a year's supply of grace for the amazing low price of nineteen ninety five. Mm. Call within the next ten minutes and we'll double that grace for the same amazing low price of just nineteen ninety five. Wow. Be one of the first ten callers and we'll provide this great offer with no shipping or handling fees. Have your credit card ready and call five 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 cheap grace. I think I'll just do that. I could use a little grace in my life. Cheap Grace, how many years of our product will you be needing today? Well, I guess I wanted the special that was just announced on TV. Which one would that be, sir? Uh, the one that offered Grace for nineteen ninety five for a year's supply, with a bonus year and free shipping. Oh, yeah. Which card will you be using today? Discovering the Master's Express Visa. Your card number? 5555-5555-5555-5555. All fives? Yes. How convenient, sir. Now, as a preferred customer, I'm authorized to offer you a free trial of Mercy. This trial is available to you because of your standing as a valued customer and will be sent in your grace packet. Your credit card will be charged $5.95 a month after the initial free trial. Well, I hadn't really thought about any additional purchases. Mm, I think the offer of grace will be enough for today. Perhaps I didn't explain myself well enough, sir. The bonus Mercy won't cost you a dime. For the first month? Uh, yes, that's right. I think I'll pass for now. Thank you. Roy, because you were one of the first, uh, ten callers, I've been authorized to provide a three-month free trial of kindness and as a special bonus gift, a one-month supply of joy. It's free? Well, after the trial period, your card will be charged twenty-four ninety-nine per month for these two special items, but you can cancel at any time. I think I'll have to pass on that one, too. My budget's a little tight right now. But that's the beauty, Roy. You won't have to pay anything for at least a month, and then we simply bill your credit card. What could be easier? I still think I'll pass. Thanks. Before you go, our president has just informed me that you're eligible for a six-month supply of love. Free? Love? Well, no, not exactly. Remember, there's nothing free in this life, Roy. But this offer does provide the benefit of love for a full half year, and you can cancel at any time by calling the toll-free number, which is located in the small print found at the bottom of the sixth page on your invoice. I will also be able to send valuable coupons good on a number of other products, including goodness and self-control. I could use some self-control right now. I think I'll pass. Don't you want love, Roy? Well, yes, but the only reason I called was because I thought the offer of grace for a couple of years sounded like a good idea. Now I'm beginning to wonder. You know, Roy, I think you might benefit from a free trial of patience. Oh! When making recipes, it may be no secret that you can substitute one ingredient for another and have similar results. For example, you can use butter or you can substitute certain cooking oils, applesauce or yogurt. And if you're using an egg in baking, you can substitute a half a banana per egg. It seems like more cooking hacks are being discovered all the time. This shouldn't come as a surprise. People have been making substitutes in every area of life. For example, the search continues for a better alternative to grace, mercy, and truth. But somehow, it doesn't leave life's recipe better for the exchange. Never fear, someone will keep trying until they learn that for some things, there will never be a good substitute. Uh, are you lost? Yes. Well, what, what is your name, son? My friends call me Paul. What's your name, mister? Uh, Gepetto. My friends call me G. Hey, that's a great hat. W where did you get it? It came with a puppet I used to play with. Oh? Gepetto and Paul Nokio walked down the street talking as they went. G wondered about the young boy's stuffy condition and was concerned that it only seemed to be getting worse. Not knowing what else to do, Grant invited Paul to spend the night and promised to look for the boy's parents in the morning. However, in the middle of the night, Paul quietly left the house and walked down the street, where he was met by a hairy, odd preacher. What are you doing out so late? I was just on my way back home. Didn't I see you sneak out of that window? No, that wasn't me. 
Are you sure? I'm not lying. Oh, I've seen this type of thing before. You're not telling the truth. And when little boys your size refuse to tell the truth, their noses get plugged up. My dose isn't pug. <laughs> oh, yes it is. If you want to find real joy, then you must stop saying things that aren't true. I ran away from home this morning, and G. Petto took me in. And I was running away from him because, well, I don't much care for his cat. Now I want you to go back to G. Petto's house and tell him the truth. Then let him help you get home. Remember, Paul, stop saying things that aren't true. Your nose will thank you. The hairy, slightly odd preacher left as Paul went back to Grant's house. The next morning, Paul told Grant that he had run away from home and told Grant, I'm sorry for lying. I, I was just afraid. So, where do you live? Uh, on the west end of town. The west end? Yeah. Well, maybe I should take you back to my office and take a look at that nose of yours. It sure seems to get stuffed up a lot. Uh, yeah, I seem to have that problem lately. I'm sure it will go away. Well, I don't know. You you just don't sound right. Uh, I'll, I'll be okay. I promise. G took Paul to his office and had him stay in the waiting room. Paul sat in the chair, nervously looking around. Suddenly, the boy runs out the door just as G comes to get him. Uh, Paul? Uh, come back, Paul! But it was too late. Paul had run away again. Grant fretted and worried about Paul for minutes on end. He even went to Monstro.com, a site dedicated to finding lost boys with sinus problems. Still, no luck. Grant was lost in cyberspace, and his computer locked up on him as Paul came back in. Uh, Paul Nokia, what has happened to you, boy? Well, you, well, you look like you've been turned into a donkey. Oh. These donkey ears? I won them at a carnival. Oh, well, uh, what happened to you? I didn't want you to check on my ears, throat, or nose. Because... Because? I don't have a sinus problem. I have a sin problem. Uh, what, what do you mean? Harry Odd Preacher told me that the reason my nose got stuffy was because I wasn't telling the truth. And if... I wanted a real joy. I needed to stop saying things that weren't true. Oh, Pinocchio, so you have found real joy? Yes. Yes, I have. He's found a real joy! A real joy! I'm sorry about your computer. Oh, let's go and find your parents. Okay. I actually live on the north side. Well, I know. I checked the phone book. There's not too many Nokios in there. Oh, yeah. You should meet my brother, Pin. Talk about your mammoth nose. Oh, look at the time. It appears we need to be done, which is kind of great, because I need some coffee with a fancy name that tastes like a candy bar. Until some other time. Thanks for telling me about On Demand. I've got more stuff to think about. Huh. Probably what you were hoping for. Call ya soon. Uh. On Demand 2, The Corner of Mercy and Grace, brings a more defined theme to this series, leads to a conclusion in On Demand 3. I'm series creator and writer Glenn Haskell, and I'm grateful for the help offered by some very talented voice actors. A show like this would be impossible without the help of a team. Neither I found them or they found me, but it's been a remarkable relationship. Uh, to tell you more, Henry Daynard. On Demand 2. 
as possible because we couldn't stop with one. It's the people that joined me on the adventure that gave it fresh life. Let me tell you about them. Bethany Baldwin, Randy Strew, Austin Peachy, Trisha Rowe, Stephen Phillips, Tom Chucker, Jonathan Cook, J.D. Sutter, Alicia Hansen, Dominic Trice, Peter Verzari, Caleb Zavenson, Frank Uli, Rebecca Bradford, Rick B. Daynard, Chloe Daynard, John Daynard, and I'm your credit guy, Henry Daynard. This audio tour was written, assembled, and produced by Glenn Haskell. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. This has been On Demand 2.